Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And, and, and thank you for stepping up to the plate and, and getting involved in an issue that is a concern to tens and tens of millions of Americans, but an issue we do not discuss enough. So I'm glad that we are going to jump into some hearings on this issue. I don't have to tell you, uh, but all over this country, uh, there is a feeling of deep anxiety. Uh, something is happening in our country, and, and people are not quite sure what it is. What they do know is that in this great country of ours, the middle class today is disappearing. People know that. There may not be PhDs in economics, but they know that. They're worried that their kids are going to have a lower standard of living than they are, despite all of the increases in productivity we've seen in recent years. Uh, they understand that our manufacturing base, which has supplied so many good jobs for working people, has been eviscerated uh, in recent years. They understand that median family income just during the eight years of the Bush administration went down by over $2,000. Millions of people left the middle class, went into poverty. They understand that we have the highest rate of childhood poverty in the industrialized world. They also understand something else very profoundly, and that is while the middle class is collapsing and poverty is increasing, virtually all of the income, new income created in recent years has gone to the people on top. So that today we have the top 1% Top 1% earning 23.5% of all income in America. Top 1% earning more income than the bottom 50%. Top 1% owning more wealth than the bottom 90%. And that disparity is growing wider, and it is the widest in the industrialized world. And in the midst of all of that, as you've just indicated, there are now attacks, often from billionaire-type operators, Wall Street people, who are going after the one area where people have had security for the last 75 years. The truth of the matter is that Social Security has been the most successful federal program in our history. During all economic times, whether we are in prosperity or in severe recession, Social Security has paid out every nickel owed to every eligible American. Now, we take that for granted. But during the last Wall Street collapse, when people were losing their 401s, people were losing their pensions, not one American did not receive 100 cents on the dollar of what he or she was owed for social, in Social Security benefits. That is a pretty good record. And while all of us must be concerned about the $13.4 trillion national debt that we have and the very large federal deficit, it is imperative that we be honest about the causes of that national debt. And I get a little bit tired of people saying, well, we've got to privatize Social Security. We have got to cut back on Social Security benefits. We've got to raise the retirement age because we have a $13 trillion national debt. Well, you know what? Social Security has not added one penny to the national debt, quite the contrary. You want to know why we have a national debt? We are fighting two wars, which we forgot to fund. We've given hundreds of billions of dollars in tax breaks to the top 1%. No one worried about that. Medicare Part D, unfunded. Bailout of Wall Street, unfunded. Social Security has a $2.6 trillion surplus. Hasn't added a nickel to our national debt. So if there are people who, for ideological reasons, people who don't like government, people who want Wall Street, want workers to invest in Wall Street for their retirement programs, that's fine. That's a good ideological position, not mine. But let's get the facts right. And the facts are that Social Security is not responsible in any way for our deficit or our national debt. Let's also understand that according to the CBO, Congressional Budget Office, Social Security can pay out every nickel owed to every eligible American for the next 29 years. Now, we got a lot of problems in this country. We got 25% of our kids are on food stamps. We had an infrastructure which is collapsing. We got two wars. We had a national debt, worried about health care. We've got a lot of problems out there. But you know what? Social Security happens not to be one of the major ones. Is it an issue that we should address so that our grandchildren and great-grandchildren will have the benefits they're entitled to? Yes. But for 29 years, 29 years, every beneficiary in this country will get 100 cents 
on the dollar that they're owed. That's pretty good. So let's address it. I have some ideas. I think you have some ideas. But let us not go forward, either in privatization, let's not go forward in raising the retirement age to 70. As you've just indicated, a lot of these billionaire guys on Wall Street who think raising the retirement age to 70, they're not out laying bricks. They're not out plowing snow in Vermont at 3 o'clock in the morning. They're not out lifting patients in a nursing home. They're not out doing the physical labor. To ask American workers today to be working to the age of 68, 69, or 70 is reprehensible. It is not what this country is about. It is wrong. Not only is it wrong for those working people, force them to work to 70 before they get their benefits. You know what else it does? It tells the young people who want to get into the labor market, you can't get in because we've got old people doing the work. Meanwhile, unemployment for our young people is very, very high. So Social Security, the reason that there is so much opposition to Social Security from some of these billionaire guys is because Social Security has worked. It has done exactly what it is supposed to do, not only for the elderly, but for the disabled, for widows and orphans. And this senator is not going to allow some Wall Street people who have helped destroy this economy move toward privatization or raising the retirement age. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.